Taking a look back at the 90s, we saw the rise of the fifth generation of consoles, and it was a great time to be around. We saw a lot of classics during a short time frame. There was Mario 64, Final Fantasy 7, Ocarina of Time, along with plenty of other titles. However, leading up to the release of the latest Bond film, we saw the rise of one of the most influential first-person shooters. GoldenEye 007, developed by Rare and released in 1997. It quickly established a reputation as one of the most influential games of all time, selling around 8 million copies, which resulted in GoldenEye being the third best-selling video game on the Nintendo 64, right behind Mario Kart and Super Mario 64. With that being said, what led this game to have such a profound impact on an industry? Leading up to the late 90s, shooters were largely reserved on the PC with the advent of Doom and Quake. In fact, many shooters that were released after Doom were seen as simple Doom clones, so much so that it basically became its own genre. However, GoldenEye became a very unconventional take on shooters during these days, with its attention to detail towards design along with its multiplayer. This opened the floodgates on what can be done with the genre on consoles. Suffice it to say, many shooters today were influenced by many of the concepts that GoldenEye introduced. So with all that high praise, how does this game hold up by today's standards? Looking at the development history of GoldenEye, we saw a legendary studio at their prime. The studio, known as Rare, was a powerhouse back in the day. Established in 1985 within the UK, they were known to create classics such as Battletoads, Donkey Kong Country, and Banjo-Kazooie. So when Rare began development for GoldenEye in early 1995, it was initially under the design that the game would be shipped alongside with the release of the film. The project would go under many revisions. In fact, one of the earliest ideas was to make the game akin to the gameplay of Donkey Kong Country due to its own success. However, with time, Direction focused to take influence from the game Virtual Cop, and thus GoldenEye as a first-person shooter was born. But as development became more intricate, the game's release was pushed back. In retrospect, this was a bold move, as the title was initially supposed to be nothing more than an extension of film marketing. In fact, development for GoldenEye had a host of its own issues, with many delays on Rare's part. At one point, Nintendo blocked funding to the studio. The delays were so rampant that the next Bond film, Tomorrow Never Dies, would release just a few months after the game's launch. However, despite it all, Rare chose to keep the project funded independently, and faith would be paid off as GoldenEye became a smash hit soon after release. Directed by Martin Hollis, who did previous work on Killer Instinct, he decided to implement elements into GoldenEye that were unconventional for shooters at the time. This is where we enter the stealth mechanics of the game, which are best explained by designer David Doak, who said, Whenever you fired a gun, it had a radius test and alerted the non-player characters within that radius. If you fired the same gun again with a certain amount of time, it did a larger radius test, and I think there was a third larger radius after that. In practice, the stealth mechanics found within GoldenEye provided the game with a form of depth, as in there was more than one way to traverse an area, whether it be guns blazing or stealth. In fact, in some missions, utilizing a more silent method is easier to work with. However, what really made GoldenEye stand out was its multiplayer. To bring things into perspective, shooters during this time were more popular on PC, but GoldenEye introduced a more casual multiplayer experience on consoles which no doubt led to the future split-screen craze revolving around shooters. Interestingly enough, multiplayer was implemented no less than six months prior to release. In short, what was once a simple project marketed alongside a popular film franchise turned into an ambitious game under the direction of its developers. In terms of the game's plot, GoldenEye does follow the film, but it does take some liberties. The game is set within the Soviet Union, Monte Carlo, and a few other locations. There's 18 missions in total, with three secret ones. Additionally, there is one mission only unlocked after the game's completion on the hardest difficulty. How the game plays is fairly unique for its era, with previous shooters leaning towards heavy gunning to reach a particular point. How GoldenEye made its own distinction was rather unique. Apparently, developers took inspiration from level design of Super Mario 64, in which it sported a sizable world with multiple objectives to complete within said environment. 
and turns out that GoldenEye took more inspiration from Mario 64 other than objective based design. There are a lot of portions within the game that don't necessarily add to the levels themselves, like having houses you can walk into without much of a reason why, or areas you can simply explore just for the heck of it. It was later explained by the developers that they were a bit inexperienced in level design at first. So they decided to create a world that would not only complement the objective based design, but also add to the game's atmosphere. With this concept in mind, GoldenEye introduced objective based level design that stood in stark contrast toward its contemporaries. Of course there are overall objectives to each mission, but the game largely doesn't want to force feed you information. Whether or not you'd like to take a stealthier approach is up to player agency. Moving on to weapons, I really like the attention to detail the studio suffered through. You're able to shoot guns and hats off of enemies. Sound effects on weapons are top notch for the time. And lastly, I really like the small details on these weapons. Now there aren't a huge lineup of weapons, but there are enough to satisfy many of the situations that you'll come across. And in retro fashion, you carry all these weapons on your person. Weapons include pistols, submachine guns, rifles, grenades, and throwing knives. Plus, you can get other special weapons as you get deeper into the game. For example, my favorites are these remote mines and the sniper rifle. The remote mines, as the name suggests, allow you to detonate mines at will, which can be really fun in both stealth and the open playthroughs. While the sniper rifle, similarly, can be extremely useful for both playstyles as well. It's really easy to just pick off enemies from a distance. Plus, I think GoldenEye was one of the first shooters that really expanded on the usage of sniper rifles here. The default difficulty, Secret Agent, is challenging enough to be entertaining, while the highest difficulty, 007, will tear you apart. The auto-aim system is flexible, though you'll likely need to get better at it with higher difficulties. Which reminds me, there is bullet knockback in the game, where if somebody shoots you, you get knocked back a bit. And during portions of the game, where there's a ton of enemies, this can get a bit annoying. And this is where we head more in depth with the stealth mechanics found within Goldeneye. There's no health recovery items within the game. However, you can collect armor vests to extend health. Plus, activated alarms can trigger infinitely respawning enemies. So with this in mind, during certain situations, you'll likely need to take a more silent approach. This is where using the silent pistol, throwing knives, or just karate chopping become very useful. Using this method has its own set of benefits. For example, being very efficient during a mission and completing it under a specific time can net you great rewards. In fact, a lot of the game's unlockables have to do with essentially speedrunning the game. Speaking of stealth, while GoldenEye did have a unique stealth system at the time, it can be seen as a bit bizarre now. For example, you can get away with not alerting enemies by shooting them just once. This probably has something to do with the radius effect that the developer stated earlier, but it's always hilarious to see enemies not react when a single shot happens. Moving on, the original resolution is 360 by 240 which is typical for the time the game was released in, but in practice today it can be a bit difficult to make things out from afar. And while frame rates weren't exactly a big thing in the 90s, in fact I don't really remember anybody talking about that ever, GoldenEye does show its age here. While 20 frames per second can be acceptable for the most part, when things get crazy the game can often go below 10. Plus, this can happen a lot once you go over to multiplayer. However, what I do really like about GoldenEye is how nonsensical its explosions can be like. If you shoot an explosive barrel, it explodes. Okay, fair enough. But if you shoot a desk enough times, it explodes too for some reason. But granted, you can actually use this as an advantage during a firefight. Plus, there's some special goodies that you can unlock which can range from unlimited ammo and such. My personal favorite, however, is the DK code, which makes enemies have these huge heads. Moving on to the gameplay, I really like the presentation of GoldenEye. To going on a rampage in St. Petersburg on a tank, or just seeing how the NPCs react to the world. GoldenEye represents an early example of how players can interact with the world in an intimate way. For example, I haven't seen earlier games where you can shoot locks off, or installing modems, or shooting guns off of enemies' hands, etc. Plus, this was one of the first games that really popularized the concept of headshots in shooters. And another thing I found really interesting about GoldenEye is this. In addition to shooting locks off or random things exploding, GoldenEye, I believe, is an early example of environmental destructibility. Moving on, the draw distance of all things considered is commendable for its time period, at least compared to Turok and its extremely foggy environments. How enemies react to players can be fun, but it is hilariously dated. 
like watching how enemies try to shoot you while navigating in an awkward way, or simply not realizing that their buddies are dying all around them. Personally for me, GoldenEye's multiplayer was one of the most memorable things about it. Split screen allows up to four players to go up against each other. There is the basic deathmatch where you can mess around with buddies, but there's other more intricate modes. Never Die Twice sets up the match where you only have two lives, which kind of reminded me of Smash Brothers with the stock matches back in the day. Looking back, these modes were pretty early variants at some of the modern ones you'd see in today's shooters. I remember playing split screen with friends eating pizza in college at the time. We played matches that involved us going up against each other barefisted, or whatever hilariously awful thing that we tried. However, the legacy GoldenEye had for console shooters is profound, which is even more amazing considering only 9 people worked on the game. This game's concepts would be incorporated in so many other titles since then. As for the developers who worked on GoldenEye, a sequel was considered to be developed after the Bond film Tomorrow Never Dies. Unfortunately, Rare lost to EA when it came towards bidding rights to develop, and the games that would follow under EA weren't exactly as memorable as GoldenEye. In fact, no other Bond game would even come close to the sheer commercial success or the critical success that GoldenEye achieved. Those who developed the game would end up working on spiritual successors such as Perfect Dark and Time Splitters. The composer for the soundtrack, Grant Kirkhope, would later work on the beloved Banjo-Kazooie series. And funny enough, the game GoldenEye actually went on to generate more revenue than the film it was based on. Also, interestingly enough, key developers from GoldenEye would later leave Rare to form their own studio known as Free Radical. Additionally, many other shooters in the modern day do note some sort of influence from GoldenEye's multiplayer. A recent example can be found within Nintendo's new IP Splatoon, in which developers stated influence stemming from Perfect Dark, in which that game was a spiritual successor to GoldenEye. Looking back on it all, it's almost like tracing a family tree. Later, in 2010, a remake for GoldenEye was released on the Wii. Sporting updated graphics, it includes smaller features such as using a mobile phone as opposed to a watch. I'm not entirely sure how the multiplayer was since Nintendo Wi-Fi is gone, but the remake eventually saw an HD remaster for both the Xbox 360 and the PS3. In other words, we have a remaster of a remake of a game. Really, the remake's okay, but it seems like you really can't catch lightning in a bottle again. However, the spirit of GoldenEye lives on within the community. The fan-made GoldenEye Source, in my opinion, is the best rendition of the game to modern times. It utilizes the Source engine to recreate GoldenEye's experience. Apparently, the fan project is still in development, but so far, it looks great. Regardless of all the different versions, the original GoldenEye is probably one of the most influential games out there. Would I recommend it? Well, it depends. Granted, the game is pretty dated now, but if you have friends that are around that are willing to look at a game relatively for its time, a lot of fun can be had here. Personally, I'd recommend getting the game on the original Nintendo 64, but if you're looking for a more modern take, I would recommend giving GoldenEye Source a shot. There's something undeniably special about the legacy of this first-person classic. Honestly, I was a bit surprised to see how influential this game was while researching for this video, which is no doubt a testament to the modern first-person genre. So with all that said and done, GoldenEye is seen as a prolific installment to shooters. However, despite its age, GoldenEye will remain a title close to people's hearts.